Hey, hey, we're crackalacking in the garage uh, transmissions. Uh, I got my close ratio box put together and I'm going to stick it in the tub buggy. I had another transmission here that uh, had a close third and fourth, 148 third as opposed to a 226 and a 104 fourth as opposed to an 089. And I really like that with these oversized tires. But that transmission is sitting right here. It was making noise. And what I found was uh, a bad uh, outer bearing, the axle bearing. And uh, it, it sounded horrible. So I took it out of the car and I finally got around to it. And I hope you can see this in that sunlight. You can see all the chips in that race. Now, as soon as you start hearing growling and noise, a new noise, and this was new. I took somebody for a ride and they said, ah, just let it go, put some heavier oil in it. And we've got a noisy transmission in Valerie, the uh, 66 with a swing axle. It has bigger bearings on the sides, such as this right here. And, you know, these can also get rough and chipped. If, if you hammer it or knock something bangs into something, they get tolerances open up after years and years of driving. Uh, this happens to be a super diff, uh, snap ring super diff, and you can look down in there and you can see it's got four spider gears. A stock differential has big windows in the side, and, and you can see down in there, it just has two gears. So you add the shaft and you add two more spider gears and a bigger housing. It's got all these holes on the outside, so you can use early or late style ring gears. And here's a comparison of the IRS, and here's a side-by-side -side comparison this has tapered uh, roller bearings and this has ball bearings there's pros and cons to both most drag racers just are going straight for a quarter mile and they want the extra strength and they will use this style transmission with a super diff in it and try to keep it together uh, nothing matter with a CV setup but you probably if you're gonna hammer it like that you want to go with like the 930 Porsche CVs that are heavier and beefier and got bigger cages in them and they cost more usually you spend more you get more right now here is a quick uh, look at uh, a late style pinion and here's the pinion nut that holds the pinion bearing in place it's got threads on it and you have to have a special wrench to tighten that down this one over here is a uh, earlier one and it takes the four hole flange uh, I had one of each of these transmissions uh, and this one has a forged flange and you can tell that a racing flange because usually the racer ones have that slot in there. This is made out of a little different material than the other original ones. They're a little bit softer. These are stronger. And I had two different transmissions. One was a four bolt and one was a uh, modern screw type. And you can see this, this happened to be one that was but this has got a close third and fourth and i'm using a super diff and i really like it but i have to change out this bearing because it made a lot of noise and i'm going to get after that and uh i wanted to show you guys some of this stuff if you got questions before i put it away maybe i can uh, uh show you uh it's a good idea to stay organized uh i know it looks like a mess but i know where everything goes that you're looking at here uh I like to take one transmission per five gallon bucket and keep all of the parts in there. That way you keep you, you separate. start doing this transmission building like this, you're going to pick up any transmission that you can from anybody, broken or not. doesn't make any difference because there's a lot of pieces in there, just like inside an engine. All these guys, you know, they blow up an engine or they have an engine that's wore out and they just throw it away. No, 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 no. There's good stuff in there. There's little, uh, the shim pack for the crankshaft, the little spacer washers and the distributor shaft gear. You could buy a brand new case, but you need, it does come complete. There's a lot of little things you can take off of a worn engine. The cam gears, they made those in plus or minus uh, degrees so that you can get your cam bearing clearance just right. There's a lot of reasons to save old parts, but 
you know, at some point you, you end up with a pile of junk. You have to have a place to store it. So uh, you can you can put a lot of the guts in these buckets, put the lid back on, and store it outside. The fellow that I had these transmissions had them in this uh, trash can over there. I had two transmissions in there, and uh, I, I'm trying to make one good transmission, and I think I've got one together. And while I have the table set up, this is just one of those little catch pans. Uh, that you put underneath your car to catch the oil drippings it, it has a nice lip on it because I guarantee even if you pull the plugs and drain the oil when you start taking these things apart there's going to be more oil in it and it's nasty uh, nasty nasty so that's where we're at that's what we're doing hope you have a good weekend thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy out I need a burrito that's what I need